Hey guys, how's it going? We are here at the house build. We're just at the three month update, basically. The, my camera's gonna be struggling. We got the sun behind me blaring in. We got all kinds of shadows and everything. I got the Jayco here today, actually, because Lowe's did a wrong delivery and delivered a handful of doors to my billing address, my home, instead of the shipping address. So. If you're ever wondering, these are eight foot pre-hung interior doors. I got three of them in here. Could maybe fit four of them in here. And I just needed to get them over here. So I tossed them in the old Jayco. I could have tossed them in the back of the truck too, but I needed to do a couple things with this, uh, do some kind of winter prep. So I got this thing winterized and ready to go. So now it's kind of ready for some winter adventures. Added some diesel additive because I did have an issue where it was like negative 10 and it was having trouble starting. I think some of the, the fuel was gelled up. But you didn't come to watch that, though this van is a similar color to the house. It's just here, so I thought I would mention it. But winter van trip adventures coming very soon. So here's basically where I start each morning, here in the good old shipping container on the lev rack, kind of my work station where I store a lot of gear, tools, snacks, charge batteries. So I come in here, I check out, I made this little insulated box, more on that later. Check in on the status of all my batteries and just kind of get organized for the day, start pulling various tools out that they were going to use that day. This is a new DeWalt saw. I got the big boy Black Friday deal. Uh, and then I'll usually grab a snack or something. And oftentimes, Athletic Greens. So AG1 has been kind enough to take a particular interest in keeping me healthy and fueled and also sponsoring this video. So this little canister of goods right here, AG1 by Athletic Greens, is more than just a greens powder. It's like, it's like a supercharged, super food, daily multivitamin, probiotic, prebiotic uh, kind of drink. And it's become part of my morning routine a lot of mornings because I've been working a lot of hours. I haven't been eating that healthy. And this is like the one good deed that I, that I do to my, I mean, I do more good deeds than this, but the one good deed I do to my body, kind of try to do it every morning, is just drink this little drink. Uh, and I haven't been sick for the three months I've built this house and I have been not sleeping, working long, super stressed, baby on the way. Is that Athletic Greens? Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. I'm naturally a pretty healthy guy, but I liked it. Let me see where the light, oh here, oh. Oh, so it helps with all kinds of stuff. Energy, uh, gut health, pre and probiotic stuff, kind of helps with mental clarity, recovery, performance, all of these things. And it's just been a really easy thing to work into my morning routines to kind of do my body right. And you guys didn't like last time I drank this on camera and like you could hear the audio of me gulping. So we're gonna mute this real quick. So it's, I mean, it's got a lot of earth in it. So it's definitely an earthy flavor. And I said this last time, and I think it's still accurate. It's kind of like a muted bubblegum flavor, if that makes sense. But super easy to drink. Uh, you can mix it into smoothies or whatever you want to, but I just drink it au natural, uh, just water and powder. So if you'd like to try some, you can just go to athleticgreens.com slash L-L-O-D, they're gonna throw in a few free goodies at that link as well for you. So check it out and thank you again, AG1, for sponsoring this video and helping, helping keep me healthy. All right, so yeah, the shipping container, I think I'll talk more, I don't know, like I'm kind of a gear channel, right? But I'm not, I don't want anyone to think that I'm a, a full construction worker or really know what I'm talking about. So I could talk like tools and gear and stuff. So let me know if you guys want me to talk about that. But full disclosure, I don't do this professionally. I am building, you know, I'm building my own house and I do build a lot of stuff. And I, I did work construction a couple of summers. I know like a tiny bit, enough to be a little dangerous, but I'm not a pro. I don't know everything. I don't know most things. But if you guys want to see like what gear I've been using in the daily, build my own house grind, I, 
I can show you that. I am a DeWalt fanboy, so all you Milwaukee people, you can hate, hate away in the comments down below. This was a pretty screaming uh, Black Friday sale. I got a full on double bevel slider, 12 inch massive monster big boy on the rolly stand. So we basically wheel that out to the job site every day. Most of my other tools are battery boys to include the DeWalt battery nail gun. I do got a couple random Ryobi tools like this guy because DeWalt doesn't make one. So I invested a little bit into the Ryobi 18 volt system. And then, and then the couple guys I have working with me uh, also bring a lot of their own tools. They got like, you know, the legit Hitachi nailers and stuff like that. But we could talk about that more later. I'm gonna talk more about uh, everything going on inside of this little insulated box, why it's insulated. Uh, spoiler alert, because it's getting crazy cold. And these batteries generate a little bit of heat, so basically they're in their own little box to, to stay warm on the super cold days. The sun angle, as you can imagine, has been changing. My solar panels, I have 800 watts and another like 440 watts of solar that I had just at the top. A few days ago, I just built a little frame back here so that I could have, and it's the end of the day, we're actually sitting right over these trees over here, so that the panels could be a little better angled towards the sun. And that actually, you know, I don't know if this is the perfect angle, it's a pretty good one, uh, but just built a simple frame out of some scrap lumber I had and put two of the 400 watt panels here, ran a cable back to the Delta Pros and that just setting them at that angle, I did a casual test and that bumped up my solar input by about double, just changing the angle. I knew that, that's nothing new, it's not a surprise to anyone, but I decided to go ahead and do it because I had a second to do it. So now we're getting a lot more energy. Okay, more on that later. So what I have here in the front, it's kind of annoying, a bunch of dirt that I ordered from this, uh, you know, this dirt trucking company like three months ago. And they were kind of trickling it in here and there. And that was just to fix the grade of my house to smooth it out and then make some areas in the back and then eventually to bring up my driveway to the garage and then make a little kind of parking area out back. But basically they brought about half the dirt uh, and then they brought a little more and a little more and then they finally brought the rest. And it was right when uh, my father-in-law had to take his skid steer out to another job. So we've basically just been working around these big dirt piles. They might not look that big, but they're big. These are uh, side dump loads of dirt, about 20 of them in here. But the house, what did we do on the house since last time? I kind of forget exactly what happened last time, but we did get the soffit up in here. So underneath the roof overhang is called a soffit. Uh, I don't need venting or anything in mine, so it was pretty straightforward. This is just cheapy tongue and groove. This is actually pine tongue and groove, about the cheapest stuff you can get. I was originally gonna go with cedar, but this stuff is never gonna see any weather, any sun, any anything, and the benefits of cedar would kind of be wasted on soffit. So I actually hired another crew to come in and work on the soffit details while my crew, Jim and Skylar and myself, continued on with everything else that you'll see in this video. But basically for fire rating, the underside of all of the soffits on my whole house have to be, first you have to install, this is exterior rated sheetrock drywall, type X 5 8 inch drywall. So this is fire rated drywall and that gets applied first and then on top of the drywall gets the pine tongue and groove. And this is really just, I thought it looked cool. Uh, eventually the house is gonna be a dark gray exterior and I'll kind of offset it with this cool, nice, natural light wood soffit. So that looked pretty sweet. The other thing we worked on was this deck here. So here, we'll walk around to the, the lower side of the deck. Basically we've installed all the zip, all of the 
blocking. You'll see some places we did blocking like this because that is a fire block. If you have a wall uh, in between the studs, if it's over 10 feet, you need to install fire blocking. And that's basically so the fire doesn't have oxygen to breathe and it's not jumping around everywhere. So this is basically con to contain mini fire so they don't spread as fast. If the wall's under 10 feet, you don't need that blocking, but you still do need blocking, which can go this way if the wall is shorter. And that blocking is just really to have backing for when two panels are joined. That's to support the seam basically. So you'll see that around as I'm walking around. This window is a little bit weird. I talked about that in the, the last video. Uh, and then we taped some of it. Not everything is taped yet, but you gotta tape it and then you gotta get a special zip roller so that uh, all that tape is really nicely adhered. And then we haven't put the windows in. That's actually probably coming this week or next week, but the garage is pretty much done. And I think I talked about it in the last video, but basically this is gonna be a nine foot wide by nine and a half foot tall. And that's a uh, standard 18 foot by six foot. So it'd be kind of a relatively deep, oversized three car garage here. And then here I'm bringing in some more dirt and this will kind of be a side parking area off of the garage where I don't know, maybe I'll park a future tractor or side by sides or something that doesn't really need to be in the garage, but I want it kind of handy. So here we have a bunch of steel. So here it is from inside. These controls basically handle all that. Setting beam for the deck, making sure it's all good. Using the extending boom fork again. Uh, I don't actually need that support anywhere, but when we were hanging the steel, we kind of temped up little supports and everything like that. This bracket got welded to the I-beams, flashed on the backside, and some massive concrete anchors going in there. And then the board is actually glued and bolted with half inch nuts and bolts every however so often on opposing sides. This is all spec by the engineers. So if you have any issues with all this stuff, you can take it up with my engineers. Uh, but it's all, a uh, super pretty beefy beam here, a little bit lighter duty beam up there. And these are four inch by four inch, a uh, quarter inch thick poles here. Most of the actual structure of the deck is coming from being tied into the walls, uh, both with the roof and roof sheathing, as well as the actual joists that are hung on the ledger that are attached to the wall with a crazy amount of ledger locks. Did get the roof installed and the downspouts installed. They haven't run, or not the downspouts, but just like the little drops. They haven't installed the downspouts yet. So we just have a bunch of water dripping down these holes and causing lots of ice issues. We haven't yet graded this back portion, really. It's gotta grade a little bit for drainage so we do have a little bit of water pooling and stuff here that we got to get fixed pretty quick here uh, but basically this is the deck we still gotta it's not done we just needed to build this thing as fast as possible the basic structure so we could put the roofing on so that the roofers could come install the standing seam metal roofs which are all installed now so from inside the basement here there's going to be a stairway that goes up uh, and this is kind of a nice covered area. You can see actually where the snow has not accumulated. That's because we're covered here with a roof above it. So the deck itself is gonna be covered, but then also the lower below the deck is gonna benefit from that covering as well. So that'll be kind of a nice, nice little setup. Maybe throw a hot tub over here. We haven't started framing out the interior basement walls yet. I was actually to stiffen up the floors a little bit, the, tr the truss engineers said I could do, try and do something called a strong back bracing, which is see if I can slide some two by sixes up here, turn them tall, glue and screw them to basically share the load between a bunch of these trusses. Uh, and then I had some questions about floor trusses in a previous video. 
uh, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? And it was all pretty well thought out. But again, this is my first house I've ever built, so uh, not necessarily saying it's the right thing to do. But this span is about 30 feet. That's longer than any TJI can do. So in order to do TJIs, I'd have to do a support wall through here. And I didn't want to do a support wall through here. I wanted a massive, open, great room through here. So that's why we went with engineered trusses. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because people told me that's gonna be kind of bouncy over that span, even though everything was designed uh, to spec for live loads and static loads and all that stuff. But we will see. Uh, I know you can do some stuff, box the trusses and do some other bracing to kind of stiffen those up and we may do that as well. If you have any questions about previous stuff up to here, check out my previous videos, but we have exterior insulation, four inches of foam out there. Do you have a full PEX, radiant PEX tubing system going around this whole basement? So eventually that'll be hooked up to a, a little water heater or boiler so we can have radiant in heat flooring, but the primary heat source and air conditioning source, probably gonna go in this mechanical room right here. And that's just gonna be a forced air natural gas heater. Uh, so that was what specced on my manual J for those that are into that kind of stuff. And that's what's gonna go in. But additionally, I'm gonna have a gas fireplace upstairs. The house was designed with uh, passive solar concepts in mind. And in the future, my plan is to add a nice big wood burning stove centrally located here by the big uh, stair hole that'll kind of maybe heat the whole house on really cold days if I feel like burning some wood. So in the winter months is the back of the house, the north side of the house, basically in the shade. So I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to use this space for in the future. So it'll probably be like in the summer anytime, anyway, kind of a entertaining space where we'll set up cornhole and whatnot. But trying to figure all that out, haven't really designed the landscaping or anything. You'll see the, put some plastic windows up there. Let's actually walk up there and check it out. Around the side here are some pump jacks that the, the other crew has been using to do all the soffit stuff. So a combination of these pump jacks and scaffolding and stuff. So we're right about, just about finished with zip. Just gotta add those two pieces there where uh, the pump jacks are attached, but we got sheathing inspection, so we're good to go for setting windows and starting on siding, which is exciting, because then we'll be moving to all interior work. And since I do have the Zip R insulated sheathing, to add just a little bit of insulation once all the windows are in, and the sun is just streaming heat through here, which I've already experienced a lot of that. We got sun's just about to set here so you can see sun shadows getting long. Uh, but once windows are in, we'll be able to trap and hold some of that heat. And a lot of the work we do inside will be nice and toastier. So I guess we can do the, the run through tour again. This will be coming in through the garage, front doors here. So we'll be coming into kind of the same mud room either way, you know, maybe some coat racks or whatever. Nice big window out here. And then out the back side, we'll have a laundry room here and a powder room there. So laundry room slash kind of wardrobe, winter jacket, shoe storage. This will be a door that goes out onto the deck. This will be a little powder room. I actually got a, I'm gonna mess around with it because I can, because it's my house, like a cool looking, like black, like dark sink and a black toilet that's gonna go in here with a cool little mirror. I'm basically doing all of the uh, interior design as well. So we'll see, we'll see how it turns out with the help of Ashley kind of approving some of my choices. Here we'll have a little pantry, butler's pantry or whatever. Uh, it's not huge, about eight foot by six foot, I believe. And then refrigerator here, and then this will be the kitchen with uh, an island here. And then the kitchen sink centered in this. This is a really big window. It doesn't look that big, but it's five foot by eight foot. And these will be little casement windows that open. So 
when I'm here washing dishes or whatever, have a nice little view out there. Doesn't look as impressive with the wide angle, but it's a nice little, it's a nice little setup. Through there, dining room back here, and then the deck. The big thing, you know, I showed it earlier in the video, but that makes this house feel really nice, uh, nicer than I thought it would feel, is this deck out here. So basically, this would be a pretty big, well, two pretty big doors, because I, I couldn't afford one massive door, but two doors side by side, which will, in essence, feel like one big door out here to a pretty big covered deck. And I think this is probably my favorite, kind of my favorite spot of the house. We got the creek down there. This is kind of wooded. Unfortunately, I do gotta cut a lot of these trees down due to the county's ridiculous, ridiculous fire mitigation practices. Granted, I'm not against fire mitigation, but uh, they want some pretty extreme fire mitigation. So I have to cut down a bunch of these trees back here. And it's not even like heavily wooded. So I was pretty depressed about that, but still this is kind of the forest side of the house will be nice. Maybe put a fire pit out here, cook things on the Traeger over here and just have a nice, nice deck experience. Uh, even though the front side of the house is where all the sun and heat will come in. We got a staircase, more on that later. He's actually a, a YouTube subscriber, hit me up to ask if I needed any fabrication and he is gonna be, uh, I hired him to do the staircase. So it'll be a really cool mono stringer staircase. Uh, so we'll get in there and I'll talk, I'll talk more on that and him later. This is my little office area. Oh yeah, the plastic windows. We just quickly put up some plastic in the windows because last week was crazy cold. It was like high of 15 on one of the days. I think this week's getting back into 50s and 60s, I believe. But while we were putting in some of these hurricane ties and stuff, random interior, doing these interior walls, we decided, hey, let's put some of this up and it'll prevent some of the draft and keep a tiny bit of the heat in here while we're working. But basically this is, this is one of the bedrooms here. These are actually pretty big bedrooms. Another of the bedrooms here, a bathroom here, and then our bedroom, the master bedroom over here with the master closet and the master bathroom and the poo poo, the throne room here. So that's basically the house. We haven't quite finished framing these walls because I ran out of longer <laughs> two by fours. So I had to get some new ones ordered and then we'll finish up here and move down to the basement. Here, let's go on the roof and check it out. This ladder, don't, don't ever do a ladder that's at this angle. It's pretty stupid, but <laughs> I don't feel like getting another ladder out. And this is just barely tall enough. But this man, this ladder from Little Giant, the King Combo, goes down into an A-frame and then tall like this. This has been like my main go-to ladder. I actually just picked this up at Ace Hardware one day because we need an extra ladder. Best ladder purchase. But up here, we won't, we won't walk around on it. But this is the standing seam metal roof. These guys did a really nice install. We got the flashing angled out to get into the gutter. Got the gutter covers. These are actually acquired by code above X amount of feet in elevation for higher wildfire danger areas. So I got the little covers and gutters everywhere. And then these guys here, there's actually three of them as you go up. These are like snow rails. So these basically ensure that snow stays on the roof. The roof was engineered to handle all of the snow loads that we have here. And this basically retains the snow so that it doesn't just slide off and crush someone that's walking down here. So that's what that is. And we got that all, all done up nice. So yeah, that's basically the quick update. Again, always, I think I'll do a budget video later once I kind of have, I know what everything costs. Towards the end, I'll do like a budget breakdown on how much everything costs. And I've actually been trying to save a lot of money on various things. I've been buying a lot of things that are on sale for Black Friday right now. So vanities and appliances and everything. And I've saved a handful of thousand dollars just because of timing. 
happened to be about right now is when I could order some of those things. Granted, a lot of the stuff paid full, pretty much everything paid full, full price for, but some of the appliances and various things, closet fixtures, vanities, I have been able to buy um, during Black Friday. So they're all gonna start showing up here pretty soon. So back to the good old shipping container. I showed you the, the solar setup earlier. So now this box, this box is just actually some rigid foam insulation I had left over from uh, insulating below slab and foundation over here. So this is just the two inch uh, and I cut it into a box. There's a couple openings for solar and stuff to get in, cables to come out the corner and the main kind of extension cord we're using to power pretty much everything over here. So if I pull this off, this is kind of my, my little hot box I got going on in here. Uh, and so we had some days that were super, super cold, single digits, and these were still powering, but they weren't accepting a charge. Actually, it was just this extra. This one never got cold enough, and that one never got cold enough, but the extra batteries don't have as much kind of keeping them heated. I got all my DeWalt batteries in here to kind of stay a little bit warm. And then I added a little, this is actually a germination mat uh, tied to a thermostatically controlled plug. I'll probably switch that over to a smart plug. So that way if it gets too cold in here, that'll kick on, blanket will kick on, it'll warm everything up a little bit. So basically I got a Delta Pro, one Delta Pro extra battery, a regular Delta, and then an extra Delta battery back there. And I have two systems because sometimes I pull this out and need to just use it, take it somewhere uh, and power something. These ones basically stay here and power everything. Occasionally there's been days here we've had multiple crews, roofing crew, the crew I have doing the soffits, me and my two guys. And so we've needed just a little bit more power. So we basically run this one and run a second extension cord. So we got uh, two sets of batteries and inverters doing their thing. I also did bump up some power in a sense. Most of it, everything we have is just running off of 110. Uh, and this is basically a 20 amp breaker. Uh, you can think of it as a 20 amp household breaker, those four plugs. This one, which is actually an RV plug here, this is really a 30 amp plug. So I just got this little adapter at Big R here in Conifer. And so now we're basically, and probably don't do this either, <laughs> but basically we're running my big giant super beefy uh, extension cord into this. So that way we're not tripping anything that would normally trip a 20 amp because we're plugging it into a 30 amp. And it's usually just for, short bursts, it's pretty cold, but the reason you don't want to do that necessarily is because your extension cord is really rated at, at 15 amps or 20 amps maybe, whereas the plug is rated at 30 amps. So you could send too much juice through your extension cord and it could potentially catch on fire or whatever. Uh, I'm not too worried about it here, but I don't, I don't, I want to mention that with some little bit of warning, but this system has been pretty good. Um, hasn't been completely flawless. Again, we've, we've had to pull a little more power, especially now that I got the big DeWalt 12 inch. That thing is power hungry. So if we have a couple compressors or whatever and that thing run at the same time, it'll sometimes trip. So that's why we did this 30 amp plug over here to kind of potentially resolve that. Uh, they basically, when they're not used, you can see I haven't done anything today, so they just charge back up to full with the sun. Uh, but it's running my Starlink full time and other stuff. So it does basically, once we get a charge, end of the day, sun goes down, it drops through the night, especially if it's really cold. And then we'll come back and it'll never be dead all the way, uh, but it'll get a little low through the night and then it'll charge back up during the day. If it's a cloudy day, I've actually... EcoFlow sent me their smart generator. So this is basically a generator that has a special plug that hooks up to the Delta Pro and can auto charge it. Uh, now it does have a CO2 sensor and a bunch of other stuff. So I have best just been pulling it out in the morning and charging it, but it basically will automatically shut itself off once that has reached uh, the charge level that I, that I tell it that I set it to in the app. This is actually a dual fuel, so it can run off of gas or propane. And it basically has, it's really designed for the EcoFlow system. It has the special plug that's a smart plug that can send the smarts back and forth to auto start or auto shut this thing off. 
when it detects the battery levels. Uh, and then it also has a little regular plug here. So basically what I use this for oftentimes, if it's, we have a couple snowy days or whatever, I'll charge both the EcoFlow Delta Pro and the EcoFlow Delta off of the generator. So one is plugged into the specific port. I'll have that plugged into the EcoFlow Delta Pro, and this I'll have just into the regular Delta. The cool thing is this port here, it's a DC to DC, so you're not losing any efficiency through the conversion from DC to AC, which you do through a normal plug or a normal generator. Also, this just does direct charge. When you're charging it through a normal AC plug or an AC generator, it does try to do the pass through power. So if you're charging this through a normal generator, just through the normal AC input, it when you pull a load off the inverter, it tries to pass that through to your source power. So it'll really bog down or sometimes just trip a generator if you're pulling heavy loads through this. With the smart generator, that just charges at a flat rate and the battery does its own thing and that just charges it. It doesn't try to pass through any power. So you can charge this thing at I believe 1800 watts through that. So it's super fast and just kind of a seamless integration. So I've been really liking that whole setup. And then yeah, just batteries work better when they're warm. So I just kind of store all my extra batteries in here when I'm not using them. And then during the day we'll grab them out and, and use them. So that's basically my cold weather setup. Now I can pretty much guarantee I'm using this system harder than 99.9% .9 of people out there that have this and it has just been a workhorse. So not paid to say that or anything. They did send me this setup. I've, I've talked about that in the past, but it's been awesome. Everyone who sees it is just like all the other construction workers and stuff are like, man, I've never seen anything like that. That's crazy. And it's over here powering multiple compressors and saws and charging everything running our radio. We got a second microwave actually out there uh, because now we're all heating stuff up. So we got my little microwave over here. We got a second microwave over there and that's basically it. So I just kind of nerd out over this stuff. So it's been a really rad setup. And then these are the, the panels. So the other set I didn't make them out for. So the 220 watt panels are still on the top. And then this one. So these are the EcoFlow panels. Um, they are not designed to be used like I'm using them. So again, this is another product where I talk about it sometimes, but when I get stuff for free and people complain like, oh, you're buying, if I paid this much for these, I probably wouldn't misuse them like this and just like run them so hard uh, in ways that they're not supposed to be run. So this has been out 24 seven rain, snow, zero degrees, 100 degrees, what well, actually hasn't been in 100 degrees, but, and they've been flawless. I'm not telling you to use them like this because you're not supposed to. These are really supposed to be like temporary fold up, travel, set them out for a day, fold them back up, move them around like portable panels. I'm using them as basically hard mount panels and well, they've been, they've been great. So yeah, that's it guys. Uh, next video, actually right after this one, I think I'm gonna do my, my holiday gift guide that I've done every year. It's a little late, it always is a little late, but I'll get it in before Thanksgiving, I think. So you can look forward to that this week if this video goes live this week anyway. As well, hope you enjoyed it again. I love hearing from you down below, whether that's just to bash on my work or that's to say, good job, keep it going. Or if it's just to ask me, uh, tell me what videos you want me to see, if you want me to cover specific topics or anything like that. I'm also, I'd love for you to chime in down below. This kind of stuff I know is a little outside of what people know me for on YouTube. So I'm trying to basically decide I want to continue this series, the homestead series, to build out the homestead and raise food. This is, this is the idea. I'm building a house right now, but this whole 15 acres is going to be a homestead eventually. So whether I should really drop that to a second channel or just keep it here into the channel that has basically evolved just to all things that I like. So let me know your thoughts on that kind of stuff down below. And as always, appreciate you... Appreciate you watching. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving this week. And until next time, guys. Oh, yeah. Little, little pathetic beard update here. It's really 
it's pretty disgusting. Ashley's not much of a fan of it, nor am I, but I'm gonna see it through for another month or so because I'm a man of my word. So yeah, until next time guys, take care.